The Lamborghini Huracan Storato, by rights, is a car that shouldn't make sense. And yet, it rides beautifully, making it the most comfortable Huracan yet devised. Speed bumps and potholes are no barrier and parking spaces can be improvised. It has the same enthralling 5.2 liter V10 engine as before and the acceleration and soundtrack that comes with it, and the same visual drama too. The Hurricane's body wears the rally-inspired arch cladding, spotlights, and smorkel well. And, as it turns out, it's a riot to drive on the track and off it on sand, gravel, and dust. The interesting thing about this car, smiles Lamborghini's head of marketing and sales, Federico Foschini, is that the most extreme Hurricane and the most comfortable Hurricane are actually the same thing. That Hurricane Storato is not a car born from the marketing department, however, it came entirely from Lamborghini's R&D and design teams, beginning life as an inside job skunkworks project. Former Lamborghini chief technical officer, Maurizio Reggiani, was convinced that Hurricane's four-wheel drive system was capable of doing something like this, Foschini says. And in 2017, a prototype was built. We made a one-third scale design model and Reuven Moore, now Lamborghini's CTO, then head of whole vehicle development and hard at work on the US, liked it a lot. We both love old rally cars. I said to him, why don't we build a demonstrator? He said, yeah, we have a Hurricane Performant development car free. I said about designing the cladding and so on. Everyone fell in love with it, especially when they drove it. It was our baby of awe and D that we were proud of, but it was not the time to release it. When Stephen Winkleman returned to Lamborghini as CEO in 2020, during the longest design meeting in history, a production version got the green light. When we showed him the Storato, he said, that's what we need to do, Borkert says. It fit again with his always different philosophy for the brand. Fast forward to 2023 and the production spec Hurricane Storato is here, in front of us under Californian sunshine and ready to drive. In the UK, it's priced at £232,820, around £29,000 more than the Hurricane Technica. Although most customers across all markets are expected to spec between €30.40 on options, which include the separate spotlamp pods, roof bars, and optional liveries, including a Lancia Stratus-esque Alitalia-inspired graphic scheme. It is limited to 1499 cars globally, a number which changed more than once, more mentions, after the Storato sold out more quickly than expected when first revealed. Nearly half will be sold in the USA, with Europe and the Middle East the next biggest markets. The roof scoop air intake is standard fit to better feed clean air to the V10. This was the last feature added, Borkert says. It came from testing, because when you go sideways, the air to the normal vents ahead of the rear wheels gets closed. Clamber in and the main visual difference inside versus a regular Hurrican is the discovery that the snorkel system almost totally blocks the main rearview mirror. In a Hurrican STO, you can see through the engine cover slats like looking through the ribcage of a carbon fiber creature. In the Storato, there are only tiny chinks of daylight either side of the new snorkel in the main mirror and without a permanent camera screen you're more or less totally reliant on the door mirrors once you're on the move. Heavy to be floor mats aside, the other main interior differences are a new suite of off-road displays for the top screen, with compass, inclinometer, and steering angle graphics, and a keyword change on the drive mode switch on the steering wheel. In place of Corsa, there's rally mode. We'll discover what that entails on and off track shortly, but first the road. Frustratingly, that predominantly involves heavily trafficked freeways and a diversion through a visually striking but busy, blind-cornered, and strictly speed-limited national park. It reveals a lot about the Storato's refinement and usability. At brisk motorway cruising speed, the all-season tires, run-flat Bridgestone Duelers, of a construction developed specifically for the car, are actually very quiet on admittedly smooth surface roads. Certainly far less noise gets into the cabin than in Porsche's 911 the car and in older generations of the Hurricane, which could be really hard work on a long trip. It's easy to hold a conversation without raising your voice. There's still nowhere to put anything in the cabin and the boot in the nose is still tiny, but you do now have the option of roof bars, which could make this the most practical Hurricane for road trips yet, especially as you can easily leave the tarmac and explore, to at least the same extent as you could in a regular car, 
if not an SUV, we dive off the road and take a quick tour around a campground just because we can and in town, it's easy to drive up and down access ramps or over broken tarmac without a second thought. It's certainly no Land Rover. Moore explains that the Stereo's remit is to go full throttle on a gravel stage for fun rather than to climb over ruts and obstacles. And it's a different proposition to the 911 Dakar, which is capable of more hardy climbing and clambering. The road stint reveals less about how the Stereo feels dynamically at speed. There is more pitch and roll than a regular Hurricane, of course. The ride height is 44 millimeters higher. It sits, very approximately, as high as the regular car does when its nose lift is activated. The springs are 25% softer and they're longer too, by around 34 millimeters, for the requisite extra travel. The dampers too are longer but essentially the same adaptive units as the regular Hurricanes from the same supplier. The road-focused strata mode and firmer sport settings have been recalibrated accordingly. Turn the wheel in strata and there is just a fractional latency between the steering wheel's movement and the body following. It's far from wallowy and the ensuing body roll is very well contained. The steering is a little lighter than in a normal Hurricane, no doubt down simply to the tread blocks on the tires, but there's still enough feedback to feel what's going on. The car behaves broadly the same in sport at lowish speeds, just a smidge more weight to the steering a smidge less roll as the dampers firm up and a lot more noise from the exhaust system. This is a very loud car when the taps are open. And a very, very quick one. Top speed is limited to 162 miles per hour, partly for the tires and partly because the car's raised suspension setup could lead to some unpredictable stability traits if the Sterata was allowed to reach the very high speeds of its stablemates. But that's still a sports car-worthy top speed, and it's still supercar quick in terms of acceleration, and the sound and throttle response of the naturally aspirated V10 is as glorious as ever. It's a lovely engine to spend time with. Sport mode also bundles much more of the torque. Split actively are the same system as regular all-wheel drive Hurricane models to the rear, as much as 80% if conditions allow. On the circuit, a rallycross track specially constructed for Lamborghini at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway east of Palm Springs more than 2.5 miles long and split more or less equally between tarmac and dirt, we flick between sport mode for the black stuff and the Storato's new rally mode for the loose surface sections. It's enormous fun. On tarmac, there's much more pitch under braking than in a normal supercar, but it's well controlled and it's possible and encouraged by Lamborghini's chief test driver, Mario Fascinetto, sitting in the passenger seat alongside. To use that weight transfer to loosen the Storato's rear, and then balance it in a slide. Unlike other current Hurricanes, the Storato does not have rear wheel steering. It felt unnatural in response when paired with the all-terrain tires in testing, Reuven Moore explains, and its torque vectoring by braking system has been reprogrammed. In a more tarmac, track-focused Hurricane such as the STO, the inside rear brake is nipped to help agility on turn-in. In the Storato, it's more about supporting the car's stability once it's in a drift. We dive headlong off the circuit and onto the dirt loop, flicking the drive mode switch to rally mode just before the tires leave the tarmac. It's a long technical series of tight hairpins, short straights, and very fast, flowing curves, some at the top of third gear. It's not a gentle course. There are some wicked ruts and the suspension hits the bump stops in several places. Fascinetta says not to worry. Keep pushing. Change up next gear. It's a car you very quickly feel comfortable with. Almost immediately, on the loose stuff your hands are crossed, applying opposite lock, without really thinking about it. It takes some learning to get the best from. You need to get on the power early, get the all-wheel drive engaged, and then use all that lovely headroom of an 8,500 revolutions per minute ceiling and naturally aspirated throttle response to make the best of it. It's been deliberately set up with an oversteer balance, but there's still plenty of traction, and you accelerate and gather pace rapidly even on loose sand. It feels incongruous to be sat in a low-set supercar driving position, that shallow-angled Lamborghini windscreen ahead, and that V10 engine yapping and yoling behind you, while seeing torrents of sand arc upwards from the front wheels or to hold a hurricane in a controlled slide at an angle that must look like madness from the outside but feels serene from inside the car. It's huge fun. And, ironically, the Stereo might in some ways be the pick of the bunch. The perfect Hurricane for the UK's pockmarked 
Battle Scarred Roads, all a moot point because the Stiletto's run is sold out. And although there will be a further 6th anniversary special edition Hurricane based on the regular tarmac based car before the model line fully bows out at the end of 2024, this is the last new derivative to be spun from the Hurricane's now decade-old platform. And it's a swan song for the V10 engine as the Hurricane's replacement to be revealed in 2024 is expected to be powered by a hybrid V8 powertrain. It's a fabulous way for it to go out, a bold boundary-pushing Lamborghini that, in many ways, unlocks more of the Hurricane's potential than anyone could have imagined at the beginning of its lifespan.